Hello, my name is Anne Kennedy. I'm a professor of radiology and imaging sciences at the University of Utah and also an adjunct professor of obstetrics and gynecology. And today I'm going to give you my spin on skeletal dysplasias. This talk is being recorded in October and that's why I gave it the name An Approach to Skeletal Dysplasias That Won't Rattle Your Bones for a Halloween theme. But its more politically correct title is Prenatal Diagnosis of Skeletal Dysplasias. And I brought this subject up because it's something that I'm actually rather scared of in my own clinical practice. When I was thinking about how to approach it in a way that wouldn't be intimidating, I decided to focus on the bone that we all look at all the time. We are not scared of the femur. We measure it on every study that we do. So think about the femur. Are there one or two? And you might think, really? But yes, you should check that two lower extremities are there and that the femurs are symmetrical in length. And then you need to look at the length of the femur. And when we talk about the length of the femur, what do we really mean by that? We mean whether it is appropriate for gestational age or not. So if the femur is the only thing we're thinking about, first thing you look at is how does it relate to the gestational age and how well do you know the gestational age of that fetus. Then you compare the femur length to the BPD to calculate a risk for trisomy 21. We do this with both the femur and the humerus and it's important to realize that this is a mathematical calculation of the bone length in relation to the biparietal diameter, not just to the gestational age. And then if you do think your femur is not normal, look at the rest of the bones in that foot. Look at the tibia and fibula and the foot itself. 